Hey guys, welcome or welcome back. In today's video, I'll be making over this MCM coffee table. The top is laminate and then the edges and the legs are wood. As you can see right there, there is some bubbling on the laminate, so I will be needing to take care of that. I started by giving the entire table a really good clean with some dish soap and I'm cleaning it using a magic eraser. Once I was done cleaning the top side, I flipped it over onto its top up on some sawhorses. And as you can see, these legs have been moved once already. I'm guessing this was probably something homemade. It's definitely not designer or high end. The underneath is plywood and there is lots of gouges and holes and cracking that will need to be repaired. I always like to make the bottom of my pieces look as good as the top. Next step was to remove the legs from the base and some of the screws were actually glued in. They weren't even screwed in. Um, so once I got the screws that were actually just screwed in out, I worked on getting the ones that were glued in out and I did that with a combination of the drill and also using a hammer to bust the glue loose. Using my orbital sander, I sanded the underneath of the table smooth, and then I also switched over to my multi-tool with the sander attachment to get into the corners of the underneath there to make sure I got every little area as smooth as possible. Sharing stories that we never had yet, none is real. I think we're searching for reasons not to be like them. Once I was finished sanding the underneath, I decided to flip it over and work on the top. I want to keep this laminate wood and um, kind of do like a pinstripe design over the area that's damaged. So I'm taping off the laminate so I can sand the wood edges without damaging or scratching up the laminate too much. And I did that with my palm sander as well as my multi-tool to get those edges. There were a few places on the laminate that it was coming up, so using a glue syringe that was actually sent to me from a fellow YouTuber, Emily from Reconstructing Emily from my Amazon wish list, I filled it up with some Gorilla Glue and then used that to put glue under all the areas that the laminate was coming up and clamped it down and let it dry. My Amazon wish list is linked in the description and I'll also link Emily's channel in there as well. Okay, so to repair the damaged laminate that was bubbling up, I took my X-Acto knife and just cut out all the bubbled area all the way around until where it was still flush and connected with the rest of the table where it wasn't damaged anymore. After I got all of that cut out, I took some glue in my glue syringe and just kind of filled up the hole with it so that like the glue would go under the edge and kind of just seal it off and prevent it from lifting up any further. Once all that glue was dry, I went in with some wood filler and filled that in and then sanded it smooth. After 
after I was done with all the repairs on the top, I flipped it over and started working on the repairs on the underside. So that whole section there is cracked and that top layer of the plywood is starting to fill up. So I took a whole bunch of glue in my glue syringe and just filled up that entire area so that it would be glued down. Um, a little trick that I'll be doing in a moment is that if I have like a big area that needs to be covered or clamped down for glue, I will put a piece of parchment paper on the top before I put any wood or clamps or anything to weigh it down. That way the glue doesn't dry and connect, you know, whatever piece of wood that I'm clamping on top of it to weigh it down. It'll just, you know, it won't stick to the parchment paper. So that's a little trick. And if you guys have been watching for a while, you might recognize these doors. They came off of an MCM stereo cabinet that I painted, I believe it was last October. I'll link that video in the description below in case you haven't seen it yet. And I also like to wrap my pieces in microfiber cloths so that they don't damage the top of the table um, as I'm clamping it. We had our ups and downs, baby. Sometimes we were tight and sometimes oceans apart. Gotta learn just how to move on. After all my glue was dry, I mixed up some Bondo and just filled in any of those gaps or really big cracks that were left on the underneath side. After that Bondo was dry, I did go in and sand it smooth. So I am going to be trying to stain this laminate top. Um, if you guys did not know, you can use gel stain on laminate. I have not done it before, so this is the first time. So the first thing you want to do is just lightly sand in the area, and I just used a really fine grit sand pad. And I am going in with general finishes in the antique walnut color with a stain pad and just applying it in the direction of that fake wood green. Um, the only thing that I noticed that was kind of an issue is that it does tend to dry faster so I would suggest probably working in smaller sections and then wiping it back unlike where I kind of did the whole table and wiped it back I did have to rub a little bit to get off some streaky marks that had dried While my stain was drying, I moved on to sanding the legs and I started by using my palm sander to sand off the original finish. Um, I don't know if you can see where in this clip too much, but there is one little silver cap on the leg that was left behind. That was the only one that was there when I got it and it was really stuck on there. I couldn't get it off. So I took my multi-tool and added the metal cutting attachment and then cut it off so that I could continue to sand all that paint off those legs. And then here's a little before and after of one set of legs completely sanded down to the raw wood and the other one still in the original state that it came in. Using that same antique walnut stain by General Finishes, I applied two coats of this stain using a foam brush to both sets of the legs. Every day, and I'm still so amazed by you. So hold me tight through the night. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
So I wasn't loving how the laminate looked after applying the stain. Um, the stain itself was fine, but it really brought out all the little scratches um, across the top and there was a lot of them. So it was pretty obvious looking. So I decided that I would just switch up my game plan to do the opposite. So originally I wanted to leave the laminate top and then do pinstripes across the top to hide those bubbled areas that I cut out and filled with wood filler. But now I'm going to leave some just laminate pinstripes and paint the rest of the laminate section of the top instead and then leaving the legs and the sides that are solid wood obviously stained. So I'm starting by using a speed square to just make sure that I get the same distance from the edge on both ends. And then I start by laying out the first stripe and I'm just using some frog tape here. And once you get that first one on, you're pretty much good to go. Next, I'm gonna be using a smaller piece of tape and it's more of like a pinstripe size of frog tape and that's going to be my spacer so i'll put that on right up against that first stripe and then i'll put my next piece of tape and remove that spacer and then i'll just keep going back and forth with that spacer to make sure that i have the same amount of space between each stripe that i want on there I'm going to be using Melange Paint Clear Bonding Primer on the top. When you're painting laminate or a really slick surface like this, you want to make sure that you are using a really good bonding primer so that your paint will adhere properly. And then I am just applying this with a high density foam roller and this will also seal in my tape to prevent any paint bleeding through and it'll help keep my lines really crisp. I did do two coats of this, waiting two hours between each coat and then I let it dry for 24 hours before I started painting. I am using the color Majestic Moose by Cottage Paint today and it's a like dark brown with a little bit of a burgundy undertone. It almost comes across kind of purple when it is wet um, but it does dry with more of, of a brown look to it. And this is in their regular mineral formula. Usually when I use Cottage I use their all-in-one but I wanted to try out just their regular formula. And I am spraying this with my Home Right Super Finish Max and I did spray a total of two coats on this. I painted the underside of the table as well just to you know really make it look finished and higher end than it does with just plywood under there and I used Dixie Belle's Boss in Clear to do two coats of primer and then I went in and did two coats of the Majestic Mousse. After I removed all the tape, I sprayed several coats of Minwax Polycrylic in a satin sheen on the legs and the top and underside of the table to make sure that everything was nice and protected. Okay, now that everything's finished, before we take a look at the final reveal, let's go back and remember what we started with here for this MCM coffee table. And here is the final look. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Something's true.
If you're not already, be sure to subscribe so you can get notified of more future flips like this. Thanks for watching and I will see you guys next time.